Hello and a very warm welcome to Road to Space. I'm Lisa Peterson and I'll be your host for this live commentary on Ariane Space's flight VV23 on board the lightweight launcher Vega. With me in the studio to provide a deeper insight into tonight's mission is Samuel Rogers. Good evening, Samuel. Good evening, Liz. So two main passengers, Theos 2 and former Sat 7R Triton from Thailand and Taiwan respectively, taking to the skies for tonight's mission entitled Golden Horizon to illustrate the collaboration between the two countries as they embark on their celestial journey together. An additional 10 CubeSats are also piggybacking a ride aboard the mission. Just over 20 minutes to lift off, and we're going to go straight to the heart of the action in Jupiter Mission Control to speak to Ariane Space CEO Stefan Israel. Stefan is in the fishbowl, and we'll be connecting with him anytime now. Hello, Stefan, and welcome to Road to Space. Good evening, Liz, and welcome to the Jupiter Control Center. So, uh, Stefan, can you elaborate a bit more on tonight's mission, please? Yes, so tonight uh, we are going to deliver our 21st Vega and we will have on board two main passengers, Theos 2 for uh, Thailand. It is a satellite which has been manufactured by uh, Airbus and we have Formosat 7 Triton for uh, the Taiwan Space Agency. And of course, there are the 10 auxiliary passengers, which are piggyback riding with the cube, with the, with the other, the two other main passengers. So they're hitching on board Vega. Uh, what makes this mission so special? This is exactly that. What makes this mission special is the fact that we have two main passengers, but also 10 auxiliary passengers. Six of them are for the European Commission. And if we are able to deliver this very uh, complex mission, it's because Vega is very versatile and it's due to our system, which is called the SSMS system, which has flown for the first time three years ago in September 2020. And so, last but not least, could you share with us the main milestones to look out for tonight? Definitely. So we are now a few minutes before liftoff. We need the satellites to be ready. They are ready. We need the launcher to be ready, and the launcher is ready. And we need the weather to be with us, and the weather is also green tonight. So we are going to lift off at 10.36. We will have the separation of the two main passengers after 53 minutes. And after one hour and 43 minutes, we will have the separation of the 10 auxiliary passengers. Thank you so much, Stefan, and good luck for tonight. And we'll be speaking to you shortly after separation of our main passengers. Thank you, Elise. So you heard it from Stefan. We're all set for tonight's launch. The teams in Jupiter are now focusing on final preparations ahead of liftoff. You can see them right behind Stefan. Tell us, Samuel, take us through the key events that we can expect during tonight's mission. Yes, so first, Vega lift will take place from the Guiana Space Center in South America towards north. It will be triggered by the ignition of the P-80, which is the first solid stage of the Vega launcher. It will burn for about two minutes, and then a separation command will be sent to cut out the stage and separate it. This will be followed by the ignition of the second stage, Zephyr 23, which will take over from the P-80 and continue increasing the launcher speed. It will then be separated, and this time it is the Zephyr 9 we, that will provide the launcher thrust. Zephyr 9 will operate for almost three minutes, and during this phase will separate the fairing, which was protecting the satellites across the atmosphere. Then the third stage, Zephyr 9, will be separated. And next comes an important step. The, the first ignition of the upper stage, the Avum, which is a rather special stage because it has, um, it uses liquid propellants. It will be shut down about seven minutes later. And we will have then a long phase known as the ballistic phase, which will lead us over Australia, where we will carry out the second ignition of the Avum. Shortly after, we'll separate simultaneously Teos 2 and Formosat 7R, and uh, at the same time, as you see. Then we'll... Of 
over Cuba, where we can have the fourth ignition of the Avum and the um, separation of the cube sets. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of that. Super clear. Liftoff scheduled in just over 15 minutes time. We'll be hearing all the major milestones of tonight's mission that uh, Samuel has just been telling us about. Uh, we'll be hearing them from the mouth of the Range Operations Manager, or the DDO, as we call him in Kourou. Tonight it's Axel Serge, and next to him is tonight's mission director, Bruno Erin. And our two main passengers are due to separate simultaneously, as Samuel was telling us, some 54 minutes after the launch, while our CubeSats will be released 50 minutes later. So let's take a look, a closer look, at our, one of our two main passengers passengers Triton. Triton, a Taiwan-developed weather satellite, also known as Wind Hunter, is a remarkable feat of modern technology. It is set to revolutionize the understanding of our planet, from the depths of the oceans to the height of the atmosphere. This mission payload, co-developed by the Taiwan Space Agency, TASA, and its academic partners, is the Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry, or GNSSR, an Earth observation technique allowing the satellite to take measurements of ocean wind speeds. Uh, for Musa 7 and to try to embody Taiwan's dedication, pushing the boundary of space exploration. As we forge ahead, we are confident that a Triton's contribution will transcend borders in reaching Taiwan and the global scientific community together uh, with embark on an exciting era of cosmic explorations and uh, groundbreaking innovations. One of Triton's key missions is to provide observations over ocean areas prone to severe weather systems. In an era where climate issues are at the forefront of global concern, Triton plays a crucial role gathering essential data on sea surface roughness to retrieve wind speeds. Its real-time data transmission capabilities allow scientists to track events of natural disasters with unparalleled precision and to predict typhoon intensity as Taiwan is greatly affected by typhoons every year. Triton can provide nearly 70,000 observations in these areas in a single day. The launch of Triton demonstrates Taiwan has the capacity to independently design, manufacture and operate satellites. Taiwan is one of the most reliable international partners in the industry of space technology. Triton's data collection is not just about understanding our planet, it's about safeguarding it for future generations. And we'll be taking a closer look at our second main passenger shortly. But first, we'd like to point out a panel which is very important in Jupiter Mission Control, a panel all eyes are focused on ahead of the mission, Samuel. Yeah, it's a panel that summarizes all the status of all the systems and subsystems that are necessary and needed to achieve this launch. You can see it on the right of the screen. It's like a traffic light. If it's green, you can go ahead. If it's red, you, you'd better stop. For instance, we, we can have a red status, it could come from the weather or the lightning risk we are, we are looking at, or there, if there is any trouble in, with the antennas which are following the launcher. Of course, the satellite and the launcher have also their parameters which are monitored and they can raise a red if, if need be, in, in case of trouble. Absolutely. Uh, so, as I said, we're now going to check out the other main passenger, Earth Observation Satellite, TLS-2. Today on board Vega is Teos 2, the latest advancement in Thailand's Earth Observation Satellite Program, developed in partnership with the aerospace giant Airbus Defence and Space. Teos 2 satellite, short for Thailand Earth Observation Satellite 2, is part of the second generation of Thailand's JISTA Earth Observation System, succeeding the highly successful Teos 1. After operating the TOS-1 satellite for around 15 years, Thailand decided to renew its partnership with Airbus with the TOS-2 program. TOS-2 is a very compact satellite providing images with a 50 centimeter resolution. This satellite 
is also very agile, meaning it can take many pictures over a large area. Teos 2 will capture very high resolution images of the Earth's surface with great detail and accuracy. These images provide invaluable data for a wide range of applications, from agriculture and forestry management to disaster response and urban planning. In daily life, data allows for a precise and thematic mapping of cities. In crisis situations, the satellite can deliver real-time images to respond to climate emergencies in high-risk areas. This achievement results from a five-year collaboration between TISA and Airbus. TIOS2 represents the next big leap in Thailand Earth observation capabilities with endless possibilities. TIOS2 opens the door to promising business partners, both local and global scale. We look forward to the positive impact of this very high resolution satellite for our communities, environment, and the entire world. In an era marked by environmental challenges, Thailand, with its partner of choice, Airbus, demonstrates how international collaboration can help to address global issues. TIOS 2 will help strengthen Thailand's national space industry and economy, making the nation one of the few in the world with sovereign access to very high-resolution geostrategic information. And as we were saying, below our main passengers are 10 CubeSats, which will be released about 50 minutes after TIOS 2 and Triton, thanks to a specifically designed dispenser called SSMS, as Tiffan was telling us. Uh, SSMS is able to accommodate pretty much any combination of passengers. Isn't that right, Samuel? Yes, correct, exactly. SSMS stands for Small Sat Spacecraft's Mission Service. It's a dispenser system which is really flexible. It was already flown on several Vega missions. The first one was mentioned by Stephen in 2020 with 53 satellites on board which were launched at the same time for this proof of concept flight. Then in 2021 we had an hexagonal module supporting a main passenger and carrying also auxiliary passengers and today this time we have two satellites on the upper platform and four CubeSat deployers on the hexagonal module. And six of our CubeSats were deployed as part of the European Space Agency's in-orbit demonstration and validation program. Let's check it out. The European Commission is currently at the forefront of pioneering space technology thanks to its demonstration IOD and in-orbit validation IOV missions. The six satellites flying today will enable new technologies to be tested and gain flight heritage. The European Commission provides free of charge services for aggregation aboard satellites, launch and operations with the support of ESA. The IOD IOV services not only drive scientific discovery, but also contribute to the growth of industries, to improving the everyday lives of individual citizens and to the resilience of our planet. They enable scientists and engineers to verify the performance of innovative instruments and provide students with invaluable experience in real-world space programs. Great day for you, space. Today with uh, Vega, we are boosting our scientific and technological leadership. Vega has embarked six satellites that have benefited from uh, the in-orbit validation, in-orbit demonstration program of the European Union. In total, these are nine experiments that we put into orbit from universities, research centers, and SMEs covering space science technology publication or space environment. And uh, coming from five countries, Belgium, Spain, Estonia, France, and Czechia. This is Europe by excellence. Indeed, we give uh, the chance to new space companies as we are procuring the satellite from a very innovative company, Easy Space, in the Netherlands. This is also a new territory for the Commission. For the first time ever, we have aggregated a set of different technologies and experiments on two CubeSats that we have called uh, Sindeo 1 and Sindeo 2. Sindeo is uh, the great name for putting together connecting because uh, this is what we do, building bridges across Europe. Amongst the nine IOD IOV experiments on board Vega is S Cube 2. This three unit CubeSat satellite, conceived by a group of students from the University of Tartu in Estonia, will gather scientific data on vegetation and test a new method to help keep space clean of debris. 
Another one is ANSWER, a cluster of three satellites from the Spanish Institute of Aerospace Technology, INTER, working together to study and monitor the quality of water in the reserves of the Iberian Peninsula. This is uh, the first step. Our IOD IOV program will continue to grow. Stay tuned. And in addition to the six IOD IOV CubeSats already mentioned in the movie there, there are four more on board. Uh, Samuel, you can tell us a little bit more about them. Yes, of course. So there is NES first for CNES, the French Space Agency, with a demonstrator to detect and localize interfering emissions on the Earth. Then there is Pretty for Graz University in Austria. Then Maxat for OQ Technology in Luxembourg. And finally, we have PVCC for Aerospace lab and ESA and these CubeSats embark a wide range of payloads or demonstrators. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the ground in Kourou the teams are really hard at work as we prepare for liftoff and very near to the actual Vega launch pad is the Vega launch center you could just see before uh, Jupiter mission control and here we are in the Vega launch center the so-called CDL it's a bit like a cockpit on the a cockpit on the ground right yes exactly there are several teams in Guiana in fact these they are the one in Jupiter building which is kind of the control tower of the Guiana space center and you have the Vega launch center on the screen screen here. So it's, it's a building called Pandora and it's located in the Centre Technique, very close to Jupiter in fact. Inside this building you can find all the launcher and launch complex operations teams as well as the technical authorities. And this team, as you see, manage and monitor all the last minute operations leading to the launch up to the very last second. So here you go, you see the team's hard at work and we're going to be hearing uh, in the next few seconds one of the very important milestones of tonight's mission. That's the start of the synchronized sequence. Attention pour la séquence finale, uh, wait, wait, wait. lanceur. There we go. Top, à zéro, moins quatre minutes. Here we have it. Minus four to lift off. We've just heard the DDO announce the start of the synchronized sequence. What does it mean, Samuel? It's a very important step because it marks the start of the final phase that will prepare for takeoff and gradually give the launcher full autonomy to proceed with the liftoff. So it includes several sub steps, such as the loading of the takeoff time and the flight program software inside the launcher onboard computer. At the end of this synchronized sequence, the launcher is completely autonomous to uh, carry carry out the final operations to the liftoff. And we can see it here on the launch pad, but it actually, the first parts arrived in Kourou back in June. Yes, back in June by sea, as, you, as you've seen on the screen, at the port of Kourou, and were then transported by road to the space center. Then the PAT first stage, as you see on the screen, is uh, arrived on the launch pad. It's hoisted and integrated into the mobile gantry. Then we have the second stage, Zephyro 23, which is lifted and assembled on the PAT. And step by step, we are building an assembly of rocket, of solid rocket boosters with the Zephyro 9 last step uh, coming into the, on top of Zephyro 23. Finally, it's the Avum upper stage which arrives in a container and it's integrated on top of the Zephyro 9 stage. As for the satellites, Teos 2 arrived by plane in August and was prepared in special facilities, uh, clean rooms with a very controlled atmosphere. And there were a number of operations that were carried out in autonomy. Then Teos was integrated onto its adapter and filled with propellants. You can see the special suits we have used. For Formosat, it arrived in Guyana by plane in July and it followed a similar path with preparation, integration onto its adapter and propellant filling. The CubeSat deployer were integrated on the hexagonal module below the platform. We had, as we said, four deployers mounted for this mission. Then Formsat 7R and TOS2 were integrated on top on the SSMS upper platform. Once the assembly was complete, it was enveloped in the fairing, which protects the satellite for the next phase of the mission. The upper composite was then transferred to the launch zone on the mobile platform and hoisted on the top of the launcher. That, then, once the launcher is ready, we remove the mobile gantry and we have launcher ready for flight. And there we see it, standing tall with passengers big and small, safe under the fairing, 
In a few seconds, the DDO is going to announce the one-minute mark ahead of liftoff. You can see people here in Jupiter making their way to the terraces, the lucky few who get to see the launch live DDO, from Jupiter's terraces. Samuel and I are going to interrupt our commentary now and let you sit back and enjoy the launch. À tous les DDO, attention pour le décompte final. À tous les DDO, arrêt du temps des comptes suite à un rouge autorisation de lancement. La chronologie est définitivement arrêtée pour aujourd'hui. So it seems there has been a red. Uh, so a red is uh, it's not bad news for our launcher or for our passengers. As we said, they are safe and sound under the fairing. It is a it is one of those moments that happen uh, when, uh, for one reason or another, which we will be able to fill you in with, and Samuel might be able to give us a few explanations, we have decided uh, to halt, uh, to, to stop the launch for tonight, and a, a, another date will be set soon. So Samuel, what could this be? What's this red? In fact, there are several um, facts that, that could uh, lead to a red, as, as we said earlier. So that could be the, the launch base. Just waiting for what he's saying. Or, or the, the antennas who are following the launcher, or the launcher itself. And here it's, it's coming from the uh, ensemble de lancement, so the wall launch base. So as we know, there are many means necessary to operate the launcher. And here it seems that one, one system is not ready. So we don't want to take the risk mm -hmm, to, to, to launch the Vega today if something is not, uh, is not ready to operate. So absolutely. that's why there is a, a red here. Mm -hmm. Keeping the passengers uh, safe. And of course, we will be keeping you informed. Uh, we are discovering this in, at the same time, of course, as, as you, as Samuel and I here. Uh, so we are waiting for uh, further news, of course, from uh, the, the flight desk, and they will be, uh, we will be informing you as soon as we have more about a next uh, launch date. And uh, please stay tuned. We'll be with you shortly again. Yes, so as we were saying, um, we've just been listening to the information given to us in our earpieces. So um, please do stay tuned to our social media. We will be keeping you informed as soon as we have any news about a new launch date for our Vega for this VV23 mission. Uh, Right, so we'll, uh, we'll just stay live with you for now. We're going to wait and see whether uh, we'll be hearing from Stéphane Israel. I'm sure he is very busy right now dealing on the ground with, uh, with what there is to deal with. Um, so just stay tuned and we'll let you know shortly whether we'll be hearing uh, from Stéphane right away. Uh, otherwise, of course, as soon as we have news, we'll be giving it to you on our social media platforms. So stay with us for now. We'll be back shortly.
So we're back with you. So uh, just a quick reminder, there has been a red, which means, of course, that we cannot uh, launch tonight. Uh, again, as I was, uh, as I was saying, uh, no risk to, for our passengers. They are safe and sound, as you can see, under the fairing of our launcher, which is on the pad. Uh, Samuel, as we were saying, of course, the red is actually good news for our passengers because it means we're taking zero risks, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, we prefer avoiding any, any launch attempt in case there is any, any failure of any mean necessary to make the launch. So here, apparently, it's, it's on, the, on the launch base, so it's better avoiding an attempt tonight. Yeah, and uh, it's one of the, the ones that's the most difficult to explain. A weather red is easier because we can say, well, risk of lightning. Here, we actually don't have the precise information as to what the reason might be. So do stay connected on our social media platforms. We will be giving you any news we have uh, as soon as we have it. And of course, we'll be keeping you informed on a new launch date for our Vega mission VV23. So stay tuned. We're going to now be handing back for now, um, wishing you uh, the great evening for what's left of it. And uh, hopefully see you again soon. Bye-bye, Samuel. See you soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye to all of you. And thank you for being with us live here tonight.